I'm going to ask our third speaker uh, for this plenary to come up on stage, please. Per Enqvist, who is Director General of the Swedish Chemicals Agency and has been Director General since 2019. But prior to that, Per, you were also State Secretary uh, at the Ministry of Environment and Energy, I think, as well. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Uh, and. Uh, well, wow to uh, what uh, Pete and, and Anne-Sophie said before. Uh, um, sometimes I think by myself I maybe have um, overvalued the um, uh, chemical strategy of society, but uh, after these uh, two introductions I'm uh, pretty sure I made a correct valuation uh, of, of the strategy. Thank you very much. Um, my uh, huge thanks to the organizers of uh, Uppsala Health Summit for uh, bringing us uh, together. Uh, today to reflect upon these matters. Um, we are uh, affected by the triple planetary crisis, the biodiversity loss, uh, the climate change and chemical pollution. And how will the EU and the EU Green Deal develop and what impact has it for the European Union and for the rest of the world, of course? Which barriers do we meet on the way? Uh, the Swedish uh, Chemicals Agency uh, is the competent authority for about 15 uh, European regulations, including uh, the REACH regulation, the CLP, uh, labeling and packaging and classifying, and the plant, uh, plant protection uh, product regulation, and also the biocidal product regulation. Uh, oh, sorry. We are responsible for authorization enforcement, guidance, where we meet the company's questions about reg different regulations, uh, and also uh, about uh, regulation, reg regulatory development. And we have about 280 employees in Sundbybari outside Stockholm. We are at the beginning of a comprehensive social transformation where green technology resource efficiency and electrification are central parts. And the transition means great opportunities, but also responsibility to ensure that the transition itself does, does not involve the use and spread of chemicals and pollutants that harm people and the environment. Globally and in the European Union, there is a common understanding among decision makers, stakeholders, researchers, which we have heard today, of course, industry, often also industry, and NGOs, that society needs to strengthen the work for a chemical safe society without hazardous substances in materials, products, and environment. And several goals and strategies also aim for the sustainable use of chemicals. And in recent years, the issue of a toxic-free environment has received attention within the European Union in several policy documents and strategies, where, of course, uh, the chemical strategy of sustainability is the most concrete. But we also have the Green Deal, we have the EU Circular Economy Action Plan, and here in Sweden, we have um, environmental objectives of a toxic-free environment. To be able to achieve a chemicals safe future that also promotes social transformation, increased cooperation and more knowledge and competence development in several areas are required. One of the important roads forward is to strengthen the research and innovation with, with cross-disciplinary and broad collaborations with authorities in industry and NGOs. And this would also strengthen the ability for preparedness and proactive work. A sound management of chemicals is dependent on a holistic approach. It is one piece of an intrigue jigsaw puzzle of environmental policy where all pieces fit together and connect to each other and form a tapestry together. 
if the Green Deal should be watered down into almost nothing. Also, the EU strategy for chemicals is at risk. One thing is no clear. A chemical strategy as a single standing strategy will not look the same as a chemical strategy which is a part of the Green Deal. And this goes as well, of course, uh, for the REACH revision, which is an essential part of the strategy. The latest week, it has been uh, more and more uh, uncertain uh, if the REACH revision uh, will be present, uh, presented during the European Commission's uh, term before the elections. And if the REACH revision will not be based or be a part of the Green Deal, we can probably expect something totally different than the Commission is working on now. The EU chemical strategy for sustainability includes a long range of proposals, uh, which uh, both Pete and um, Anne Sophie has mentioned before me here. And the starting point of a Green Deal 2.0 should, of course, be to first accomplish what is already st stipulated in the Green Deal 1.0. And there is still much to complete. In order to um, create predictable rules within the EU and increase competitiveness for companies, the already proposed rules in the CSS should be implemented. However, by continuing the implementation, we must also be aware of the importance to create regulations that is proportionate and clear for our industry. And this is my first point here today. The more ambitious regulations we form, the simpler and clearer they must be. The more we strive for a non-toxic, the more we should also make it non-complicated. We want innovative companies to benefit, not those with the best lawyers and consultants. I think that the environmental agencies, like my own, uh, often scientists and also sometimes the NGOs, underestimate the importance of simplicity and explainability of new rules. And I'm pretty sure that the issue of complexity will be the main factor, deciding if and how successful the Green Deal 2.0 will be, but also how much of CSS that will be implemented into law. Rules you don't understand, you cannot follow. No mat uh, and, and it's very hard to meet standards which you don't recognize. No mat matter how well intentioned new strict legislation is, it will have no impact if it cannot be understood. And we will not move towards a toxic-free environment. Therefore, to reach a non-toxic environment, we must both strive for high ambition but also for simplification, and not to complicate it more than necessary. This is also even more important for the small and medium enterprises. We should focus first on reforms which can and will be easily understood and can be implemented without complicated bu bureaucracy and without administrative time-wasting processes. And in order to create predictable rules within the EU and increase competitiveness for companies, we must also create legislation which is easy to enforce. If rules and restrictions are vague or inexplicit, they will be impossible for agencies like my own 
to, uh, to enforce. If it requires hundreds of, of controllers to check for legal compliance, it will fail due to the lack of resources. There, believe me, there is no government in the world which will prioritize more governmental officials in state agencies. In no country. And there will be in no countries. And this is my second major point here. If legislation is not possible to enforce, there will be free riders undermining the market and the regulations will not be obeyed. And we will not move towards a toxic-free environment. If the regulations are not comprehensible to those who are supposed to apply it, they cannot be enforced either. Therefore, it is necessary that legislation is clear and enforceable. Science has unfolded the scale of the triple planetary crisis and outlined how it is hitting vulnerable communities the most. The IPCC tells us that global warming has caused, uh, caused climate injustice and dangerous disruption to the natural world. IPBIS tells us that nature and biodiversity loss are undermining the sustainable development goals. And scientists and researchers like you here today tells us that pollution and waste is killing tel uh, tens of millions of people each year. So how could we tackle the threats in a sustainable way? From my perspective, one of the most important goals is, of course, to achieve the sound management of chemicals and waste throughout their life cycle, which is one of the targets to sustainable development goal number 12 on uh, sustainable consumption and production patterns. It is a well-known dilemma that circular economy often creates a policy conflict between increased resource circulation and decreased dispersal of uh, hazardous substances. The conflict between, on the one hand, increased circulation, and on the other hand, to reduce the spread of hazardous substances, arises in different ways. For example, there are huge challenges from a chemical perspective to the expected increased material flows due to aims to prevent climate change. In order to reach the goals and the objectives of the Paris Agreement, batteries, solar cells and wind turbines will likely be central parts of society's climate and energy transition. And the transition to fossil-free uh, technology means an increased need for materials, minerals and metals. And the design of these products will affect, for example, the product's lifespan, repairability and the possibility of high-value recycling and reuse. But we shall not recycle materials that contain substances of concern. If we instead phase these out of products and materials, they will be much easier to recirculate, and in the long run, the circular economy therefore benefits from preventive chemicals control. However, even if we have an ambitious chemicals regulation, an ambitious strategy within the EU, most of the chemicals are produced outside of Europe. Trade with third countries brings us toys, plastics, cosmetics, and millions of other products to Europe. And online shopping direct to consumers is an increasing part. And therefore, global agreements are, of course, key to develop a non-toxic environment. For this reason, I was uh, very, very happy that we finally agreed upon a new uh, global framework on chemicals in Bonn uh, about three weeks ago. You may argue that this is only a framework, without, um, with not binding for the parties. But I think it is an important part of a wider tapestry of agreement, such as the Sustainable Development Goals, 
the uh, Kunming Montreal Global Diversity Framework and the Global Treaty on Plastic Pollution, which is under negotiation. And this global tapestry can be seen as something similar to the Green Deal, which is um, also weaves together the various legislations to create a self-healthy and sustainable future. I'm grateful for the opportunity to take part of all views here today uh, and meet all experts and the scientists from all over the world. And I'm convinced that the challenge we stand in front of will keep this discussion ongoing for quite some time. Thank you very much.